It's the Practical Prayer Podcast pre-show on the New Thought Media Network. Okay. I'm uh, I'm Bill, that's Carol, or that's Carol and I'm Bill, depending on which side of the screen you're looking at first. And uh, we are here to record the Practical Prayer Podcast. This is episode number 105, so which shows that we're either really good at this or that we've just been failing at it for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. And uh, on New Thought Media Network, basically, we're doing uh, the, this is the live studio audience. So if you have a question or a comment or a request, uh, you can put it into the chat on your YouTube or Facebook stream, and we can take a look at it now. Or you can always go to be the light.com, B E T H E light.com. And uh, there's a little comment on the podcast button there. So you can send us something, and uh, we will take all of that under advisement. And uh, so we're talking about just stuff. We got actually a really f fun episode coming up. That was funny when you said that. I was thinking stuff, and stuff. you said it just stuff. stuff. Well, Ernest Holmes used the word stuff. Yeah, he was talking oh about the goodness. infinite creative substance stuff. Yes. When I first read Ernest Holmes, and I didn't know who the heck he was, I'm reading all this deep stuff, and I was like, "Oh, this is really great!" And he used the word stuff. I said, "Stuff." You use that word? You know, like, <laughs> like, don't you deep scholars use something else? But he said stuff. I said, okay, I like it. I like it. I was doing a practical prayer once, and somebody who'd grown up with a very seriously religious family in her tradition heard me refer to God as it. And she says, yeah, that's where you had me. I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> Take the patriarchy out of it. Let's go. Let's go. To me, it was just the best word to use when you can't describe whatever it is. It just was it. And yeah. It's cool with me. And if you try and use more precise words, then people think that you know what you're talking about, in which case you're then held to a much higher standard than what you actually meant. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I sometimes run, run into the challenge. It's not a difficulty. It is a challenge that... Um, if I say something uh, offhandedly or without thinking it through, people will bring it back to me like hours or days or months later. They say, but you said this. It's like, I, I did? I didn't mean that. <laughs> yeah. You know what? It's like so much, you know, and you just, I don't try to, I, I try to be respectful, but it's too much to try to think ahead of, how a person's going to take this, da 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 you know. My my groups are all over the place. So I could say it to one group and they pass out and say, that's irreverent <laughs> and we're not coming back anymore. And then, and then they come back to tell me off, but then they say, well, just don't say that anymore. Or just, you can't figure. You know, yeah. you just got to go with it. Uh, my wife was teaching a class over the weekend and it had a module was on uh, diversity and inclusion and you know, some intentionally provocative stuff. And somebody went off, just like completely had her buttons pushed in the class. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, and it was traumatic to the point where as my wife was telling all of her friends and family about it, I heard the story six times on Saturday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and she addressed it on Sunday morning and it resolved. But it yeah, shook when, her up a little bit, huh? It did. It shook everybody up. And of course, that's sometimes the point of it. It's like, if there's stuff that you haven't been thinking about, then maybe if you try thinking about it, you might think something different. You know, then that's a whole other thing. Like, people don't think. They just take what's been told to them and keep on going with life, which I can't figure out how you do that. Well, that's not your style, that's for sure. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's do a podcast episode. I will press the open button, and then we will uh, we will talk about uh, truth and consciousness under a different title. Okay. A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a new thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the New Thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality 
that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. Watch your words. Watch your words. Watch your, that's that's our topic for today is watching our words. Ooh. And and I'm going to let you describe what brought that up, and then we will will put it into the blender and mix my stuff in as well. There's no way I can go back to say how that we brought that up because it came up. You know, we were talking. I'll tell you what really kicked it off. We were talking about doctors and something you were watching and they were saying that like your disease, you know, your cancer, you're this, you're that. Right. And I thought, I never do that because if I hear people do it, I just will quietly say to myself, that's not me. It's not my disease. I don't yeah. like that. Yeah. And that the was brought up. The most recent example is listening to you know, somebody who's doing a, a show on health care and mental health. And as always happens when they get a doctor in there, the doctor will start talking about the symptoms or the disease in the second person. So they're talking about cancer and heart disease and your defibrillator, you know, <laughs> and I don't have a defibrillator and I don't have any of those other diseases either. But what's happening is as people are putting that out, the folks who are listening to it are just taking the words in. It's like, okay, I am don't have... I'm interested in the subject matter. This guy is an expert. He's saying something, so I'm paying attention to it. And they're not realizing that they are subconsciously accepting whatever diagnosis the doctor is talking about because he's speaking about them. So now, now that you had, you didn't say a lot of words, but that is a lot. Oh yeah. For for somebody to even imagine that. The words coming from a radio or some kind of, you know, advertisement would have an effect on them, but it does. It really does. And I think that's how, well, we're acculturated that way because, you know, advertisement and marketing, all that. It works. Are, yeah. I mean, that's why they make so much money. And <laughs> it, it, you know, it mentioned that, I believe, in scripture. In the beginning was the word. The word. The word. And... There's been more words since the beginning, but it's, that's, that's where it starts. Yeah, and you know what I'm like, for me, I always say, just go slow. Just, just take it slow. What did you just hear? And what effect did that have on you? You know, mm -hmm. just think about it. And the idea that it can have an effect is mind blowing in itself. You know, because we do think we're in charge of everything. Uh, was that me? <laughs> you think you decide this and you decide that, but you're deciding based on the pool of stuff that was poured into your head, mm -hmm. not just from mom and dad, but everybody else. And then if you don't pay attention to it, you become accustomed to just absorbing whatever it is. It just, it becomes part of the background and the fabric of our, not of our life, but of our belief system. It is done unto you as you believe. And yes. if people are pouring in words and you don't actively disbelieve them, then you could be opening to the possibility that they're true. And that is how undesirable ideas sneak in. Actually, that's one of the ways that undesirable ideas sneak in. That, that is big. Um, and I'll say this, I, about, let's see. About 20 years ago, I guess, even longer, more than that, um, I got a diagnosis. And I just accepted it because that's what you do. You know, when you get a diagnosis, you accept it and you go on from that point. What am I supposed to do here? And I'm trying along with this, what I was told to do. And I kept thinking, but I don't understand how I got this, right? And I'm, after I interviewed everybody in the family as far back as I could go, I said, well, why would spirit just drop this, you know, the, the universe just dropped this on me. And it dawned on me, maybe you don't have it. Mm. Maybe somebody, maybe the doctor said that to you and you just took it. And, um, you know, fast forward, I did a couple of, <laughs> I did a couple of things in my head and said, <laughs> I, 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 I don't have this. 
Nobody I ha that I in my family, nobody that I even know. What is this? It's just something that I conjured up from something that I heard and probably caught up with me, whatever it was. I made up a whole bunch of stuff, but I said, you know what, I'll have this. Stop taking medicine, stop taking treatment, and I have been fine for 20 years. So, you know, I'm not telling anybody not to take their medicine, please. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. I'm just saying stop just accepting what comes at you because it's words and the words have the power to make you think and do and respond to those words. Yep. Uh, it's the words and the beliefs that come about from the words and the way that we engage with the belief and the words and it is all packed together. And yeah, by all means, if you're if somebody's on medication and they don't want to be on medication, then the thing to not do is just stop taking the medication because there was a long road that got to there and just stopping gives away the entire road and all of the progress that has been made so far. However, if what somebody wants to do is get off the medication, then set the conscious intention for that to know that there is another alternative. So it's not going to be the choice between illness and medication. It's going to be the choice between illness, medication, and health without the medication. And once we believe that, then somebody, something, some message will come along and say, yeah, it's okay to wean off the meds now. And it's, as you explained it, it's a whole picture. It doesn't mm -hmm. just happen overnight. And it takes uh, our part, at least for me, I'm speaking personally, I decided what I wanted. I wanted good health. I wanted to be active in ways that I whatever, whatever, you know, the whole thing. And I'm not an expert. You know, I didn't even really know much about all of this spiritual mind treatment or any of that at the time. I was just determined that this was not going to happen. It wasn't going to be. And and they told me what, how things would progress. And I'm thinking, well, how do you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't even know me. No, forget you. I'm not coming back here anymore. That's an opinion. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I don't necessarily have to subscribe to that particular opinion. Yeah. But it's, you got to be determined to believe in something that you don't believe in, right? Challenge what you believe, challenge your beliefs. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, it's like words been told to you forever. Challenge all that. You don't have to take it. And yeah, there's a, there's a wonderful process that we can go through. It's, it can be kind of time consuming is to say, is this true? Is this true for me? And do I accept this as true for me? Mm -hmm. So, and it can be exhausting when there's you know, some guy on the radio talking about, you know, uh, a terminal illness. And he keeps on talking about your illness and your diagnosis and your tumor and your this and your that. And I'm trying not to say those things now. You know, when you have, mm -hmm. then this is what happens to you. Is to say, that's not true for me. And I, that he's not talking about me. I don't have that. That is not something about me. And just sometimes just cancel, cancel. There's no truth or power to, to, to that that's being spoken because it's not true about me. And it's likely not true about a lot of the people who are listening to this, but it's exhausting. It can be exhausting listening to somebody on the radio who's just blathering on casting mm -hmm. this voodoo language and just saying, cancel, 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 not true. So the advantage is when I'm listening to the radio, I can change channels. You know, I can that, switch to, I can listen to oldies instead. <laughs> that was the question I was going to ask you. Like, what's the purpose in listening to stuff if it's not relevant to you? And if you're, you're not even sure, you know, I just got a text today uh, from somebody and they were, they were saying my heart is so heavy about such and such. And I had to read it over and over again because I was trying to figure out the thing that was causing their heart to be heavy. What the heck did that have to do with them? Right. Like, why are you even reading this? Why are you, why are you considering? <laughs> don't just turn it off. Yep. You don't need, you know. You, uh, Lighten up thy heart. Yeah, but I had to find a nicer way to say it because it could sound a little harsh. When my daughter was in high school and in this teaching and completely understood the power of words, and we had had this conversation about people casting voodoo language on us, and I mean, she when you know. By the time she was 10, we'd been through the four agreements on numerous occasions. 
you know, be impeccable with your word. And so, and she'd seen the cancel, nope, not listening to that, change the channel, um, and interrupting conversations around the house for a long time. Don't, don't, don't say that about me. Mm. And she's in high school and the teachers start doing that. So she either argues with the teachers and the teachers thinks that she's insubordinate or whatever they call students who aren't going along with their stuff or belligerent, or she's just mm -hmm. got an attitude and they're, re they're refusing to stop and they're refusing to let her leave. So that is the most challenging situation. We have to sit there and listen to it. So yeah. she did double duty in high school of learning what she was supposed to be learning and not taking any of the untrue stuff for herself. But, but think about how that developed even her mind. Mm -hmm. um, spiritually, but also mentally. I think that's just incredible. Oh, she is, she is one of the, 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 the sharpest people I know at listening to somebody say something and then being able to, to, to immediately cleave between what's true about that, what's complete nonsense about that, and, and also which part can she attack to make the person look stupid. Because that's her personality. <laughs> I'm sure she's adorable, but it's really, you said something earlier. You said that it's exhausting. Oh, yeah. And, um, and I agree with you, but my comeback to that would be, it, this is your life. Yeah. What else do you have to do but to protect your life? And, and it's exhausting, right, but think about the opposite. If you don't, what that's going to be like. You know, it, it's not exhausting to sit there and listen and take crap in. That, <laughs> that's, that's, that, that's entertaining in some ways, you know, depending on your, your television habits and that sort of thing. Well, fine. And I'm not putting anybody down for watching TV because, you know, I, I love the Brit box. But, but you got to be on top of what's going in. And there's nothing more important to me than to protect my spirit, my life, you know, because I'm still here. I got it. I have to. I have things that I want to do, and I don't want things getting in the way. So yeah, it's a, it's exhausting, but you got something better to do than mm -hmm. take care of yourself. Yeah, and sometimes we we were planning on using our time and our energy for something different, but you know, self care and self protection uh, comes up. And and there have been times when we've been in class you know, with students who are studying consciousness and, and truth principles and uh, all of this, the prayer and awareness. And, you know, somebody will say something, say, oh, we're just slumming with our language today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I like that. Every once in a while, we take a break from it. Speaking of breaks, let's take a break and continue this conversation about watching our words. Get inspiration in an instant. God Calls are the gentle and uplifting moment of truth to help you remember that the bright light of God's love is shining right now as you. It's your God Call with Reverend Bill. Start your two-week free trial today and you'll get a phone call four times a week from Reverend Bill with an uplifting half-minute message filled with insight, wisdom, story, and fun. Let your light shine. You can answer the call to listen to it live or let it go to voicemail so you can hear it later. After the free trial, your subscription is just five ninety five a month. The details are at GodCall.org. God calls are disruptive, intentionally. Whenever you write something, put on a gold star. They take you away from your routine to remind you about the truth of who you really are. They come at random times between 8.15 a.m. and 6 p.m., so you won't be expecting them. And somehow, the message is exactly what you need to hear at the time. Magic is loose in the world. It's a moment of motivation in the middle of your day. Find out more and start your two-week free trial now at GodCall.org. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We're talking about watching our words, mm -hmm. which is easier to do when it's really cold outside because they come out and they, they, there's a fog. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> okay. But that's not what that's not what I meant. Also smokers, but that also isn't what we meant. Um, if if in fact your words were creative, in fact they had the power to create your next experience, would you pay more attention to them than you have been paying up until now? I would. Of course. Well, yeah. 
You know, there's a, there's all the jokes we learned when we were a kid. You know, the genie comes along and you know, grant your three wishes, and you want to save one of them, and you know, find yourself whistling the "I wish I were an Oscar Mayer Wiener" song, and suddenly, boom. So, you know, those are cases where <laughs> where we really want to be careful, uh, but. And, and our words are creative. They're not necessarily creative instantaneously or with a puff of smoke, mm-hmm. although it can happen that quickly. Uh, you were you know, telling a story about uh, going to a big fair, and everybody's telling you, oh, I don't even go because there's no parking. It's a huge mm-hmm. fair, lots of people, there's no place to park. And you did what my favorite technique is, which is to set your intention for the perfect parking space, perhaps do a little practical prayer, and then drive right up to the place where you want to park. Absolutely, yeah. And there's a spot. You p- yeah. parked right across from the place. Yeah. And and there were others in the car with me that said, I can't believe that just happened. That's, and, and thank I, goodness you did. Yeah. Because I had no doubt, actually. I just If you joined in their disbelief, there would be no parking space for you there. And we'd go back home. Right. Yeah. With, with them saying, yeah, this will never work. I've told this story I, before. Again, it's about my daughter. Um, we had to go to the King of Prussia Mall the day after Christmas. And she was, we're getting there. She was like 13 or 14. She's just dissing us and giving us a, I can't believe we're trying to go to the mall the day after Christmas. There's not going to be any place to park. You won't be able to park anywhere in town. Everybody in the world is going to be there. So her mother and I are sitting in the front seat and said, well, we'll do a prayer for perfect parking space. And you can hear her eyes roll like a window shade that's like missed its stop three or four rotations around. And so almost jokingly, we, we did the prayer, the practical prayer together, because we you know, both understand the technique. We did that back and forth, setting the intention for the perfect parking space, revealing itself at the perfect time, and everything fitting together in absolute sweet harmony and perfection. And we were going to the Macy's. So I drove right to the entrance to the Macy's, where we wanted to go in. And of course, the whole parking lot, so there's not a parking space anywhere. And as we came down the aisle, somebody came out the door of the Macy's, walked to the car that was in the closest parking space and pulled out in such a way that even if somebody else were there, they wouldn't be able to get into the space before we could. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We pulled into the parking space and there's just silence from the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> just silence. She's like, and then finally she says, okay, that was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> but our words work with what we believe or... Yeah. It could be the other way around, right? The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm -hmm. So if you don't believe it, you're not going to speak it. So it goes, you know, it goes hand in hand. You could speak it and be joking. But I believe it. You know, I believe it. And people, and and I've talked to people about parking spaces before. And they say, "Ah, you know, ask God for something simple like a parking space. And I thought... (laughs) Okay, well, whether you think you're asking God or whatever you think. Wait a second. You're going to waste to... God's time? Yeah. You're going to waste God's inf- time? It's an infinite, in- infinite presence. God's yes. got nothing but time other than infinite matter and infinite energy and infinite intelligence. So what are you going to waste? Really? I, stand, oh, I'm, I sound like I'm talking to you. I'm not. I'm talking to <laughs> your friend who thought that you were wasting <laughs> yeah. well, God's time. You know, listen, David said, I don't concern myself with things too high for me. I remember <laughs> reading that. <laughs> Many, many, many years ago. And I said, you know what? That's really cool. It's not my business what God's doing, right? I just need this parking space. I got. I need to get this parking space because I don't have the best shoes on and I need to do this now. Right? Mm-hmm. So I apply it to everything. And by no men, means am I perfect at it. But I'm telling you, I'm conscious of it. And it, it's not like it works it's like I expect it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I expect it. I'm not wondering if. I'm just like, okay, I know this parking space is out here. I just need to wait till somebody points to me in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and we can think of it as, you know, God giving us the good that we're seeking, or we can think of it as just being predisposed to happy coincidences. Because the fact of the matter is, every one of those parking spaces at one point was empty. Before the event started, there was nobody there. And then people started coming and the parking spaces started getting filled up. And then people started leaving and the parking spaces started emptying. And so it's not about conjuring up a parking space out of nowhere. It's about being in the right place at the right time so the person who has to leave right now 
is getting out of your parking space right as you drive up. Yeah, I, you know what? It's just so many ways that you can approach it. It's good. It's like, I need this good. This is going to be good for me. This closed space is going to be good. Mm -hmm. And so I am either attracted to the good or I believe that the best is going to happen. You know, I just go with that flow. And whether I deserve it or not, that's a whole nother conversation that we could talk about forever. Right now, I'm looking for good. Yeah. And I, you, you have the assumption that you deserve it. Maybe I do, maybe I don't, depending on well, what you if think, you, you know, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, if it's showing up in your life, there's a belief somewhere in there that either you deserve it or you don't not deserve it. I don't if know you about if, the deserve. I have to think about that, you know. If I there's good that's available to you, mm -hmm. and you believe that you don't deserve that good, then what's your belief? Your belief is that you shouldn't have it. That's if okay. you go that direction, you know. Okay. But, yeah, I think that God is good, period, right? And mm -hmm. God resides in me. That's what I believe, in me, through me, as me. That's good. There is nothing else. I'm Like, what else is there? Do I, do I do things, you know, if you take a judgmental perspective, um, do I do things that are not good, that are deserving of a slap on the wrist? Yeah, but, what's it <laughs> okay, but God is good and God is in me and whatever this slap on the wrist, we'll take care of it in time, but it's good. I guess it's, just, it's just good. What's the debate about this? <laughs> yeah, because then that's the thing. That's the thing that God is good sometimes, not all the time, or God withholds good. Yeah, it, that, come on. I, I don't. Either God is good or God is not good. What, you, what is it? Right. I think it's good. Yeah. I mean, and and I, I, that's your point. You know, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Yes. So even if somebody doesn't deserve it, it's, they're going to get some rain. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I'm I'm trying to watch my mouth, right? Because I'm on this, uh, you know, global network here. So I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you can. You, people do a lot of stuff, and stuff happens in life. You don't stop and stay in this in the crap hole. You know, you want to you want to get out of it, and live like you're out of it. That's the only way you're going to get out of it. You can talk all day long about people or people will say, point their finger and help you understand how lousy you are and what a jerk you are. I mean, <laughs> you're not going to get anywhere like that. <laughs> so one day we're going to talk about the, the, the guy, the Good Samaritan, you know, they, the focus is always on the Good Samaritan. And I always think about a poor guy. I call him slapped up on the side of the road. You know, he needed some help. Everybody was passing him by. Look, Get up. <laughs> get up. And you act like you're getting up. Good is going to come. Somebody's going to come. Something will come. You well, know, every, this maybe he was thinking thing. about getting up and the Good Samaritan showed up. Yeah. You know, you, it's, it, you have it as you believe. It, if, what you got to lose, right? Mm hmm Well, and we always have the opportunity to up-level our own consciousness, our expectation, uh, and our thoughts about the good that's possible for us. And that creates a tendency in our thinking that can attract more good into our lives. We don't have to dictate everything that's going to happen and the way it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can say, good is coming to me now. And if we know what we mean by good, then uh, there it is. And uh, there are lots of ways to incorporate that into a prayer. In fact, Let's, let's take a break, and then when we continue, we will do a practical prayer on just exactly that sort of good. Good. Are you ready to get results? Now, that's not a rhetorical question. Are you ready to get results? Are you R to G R? That's actually the abbreviation for the steps in a practical prayer. Recognition, unification, realization, gratitude, and release, with a couple of extra steps in there in case some doubt creeps in along the way. R-U-R to G-R. This class is about the prayer technique that's common to all of the spiritual practices and religions in the most effective prayers that they have. 
And by effective, I mean that the prayer works. It actually creates a change in the experience of the person doing the prayer. It gets a result. We're going to begin with theory, and then we're going to take it into practice. By the end of the class, you will have your very own practical prayer that will help create transformation in your life. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We're having a wonderful conversation about our words and watching our words and the way that our consciousness invites in the experience that we're having next. And there's lots of ways that we can describe that in very complicated language. But for the purposes of this prayer, we're going to identify good in whatever way it applies to each of us listening, because it's different. I can't say this is the good experience that's going to happen for everybody and then have everybody want the same thing. Because some people want to have a job and some people want to retire from a job. And if you have one prayer, then it's not going to cover everybody, except if we make it be a prayer for our good mm. is on its way to us now. So if you'd like, you can get an idea of what you mean by good. Does it have something to do with your health and well-being, with your, your physical comfort? Uh, does it have something to do with your finances or your prosperity? or the sufficiency that you're experiencing in life? Does it have something to do with relationships, with love, with either romance or family or neighborhood or that coworker who seemed to be so challenging up until now? Um, it, does it have something to do with your creativity, the way that you're sharing your, yourself and doing the work that you're doing in the world? Does it have something to do with your spirituality and your awareness of the divine presence within? Because those are all different ways of experiencing good, and I'm not going to choose for you because this word is for everybody. So as we turn away from the stuff that's been happening that we have labeled as good or bad and get the idea of the flavor and the tone and the texture and the nuance behind the experiences that we are seeking, as we open ourselves to the awareness of that good and the understanding of what that means, there's the possibility of knowing that that good exists for us to have an idea about it, it has to exist somewhere, somehow, for someone, in some place. It's an infinite universe. There's a lot of room for that good to already be coming into experience. And there's one infinite creative power that has created all of it. That divine source, God, nature, spirit, the Big Bang, whatever it is that has brought all of this into being, that creative power has created each of us. That creative power is creating our next new experience now. And that next new experience has every possibility of being the good that we are seeking. And so for each one here, as we open our awareness to that divine power and presence that creates everything, we can acknowledge and recognize that it has created each of us. We are eat because there's nothing but God. There is nothing but God's divine creation. So that means that we have to be it. It's not possible that we are outsiders somehow. So as divine and perfect expressions of that one infinite creative intelligence, that one creative power, that one source, that one love, we are free to choose the good that we are seeking as well and open ourselves to it. I know that each one is inviting in that experience of the good that we are seeking and dispensing with any thought or notion that it's not available to us. Good and more good and more good is available. We can have as much as we can experience and embody and it doesn't diminish the world in any way. It is an infinite universe. All of the good that we are seeking, all of the good that we can open ourselves to is open, to, open and available to us now. This good is unfolding now in its own way for each one who is listening to this prayer. Good and more good is on the way. And it shows up in joyous, wonderful ways, and we get to tell wonderful, happy stories about it, and we can let it be significant and prove a point if we want it to, or just coincidentally have things get better if we want to. And that infinite creative power that creates everything is creating this. I'm so grateful for it. I'm grateful to know that this process is underway. I'm so grateful to be aware of this infinite potential and be able to tap into it in this powerful way. I'm grateful for the stories that we get to tell. 
I'm grateful for the joy and happiness and connection, the health and vitality and well-being, the prosperity, the love, the creativity, the spirituality that comes about from it. And so with gratitude for all of this good and more, I speak this word, this word, this creative word, and I release it into that creative law that creates everything. And I know without question whatsoever that it is now creating this. And so I let it be. And so it is. The Practical Prayer Podcast with Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of BeTheLight.com. Be-the-light.com. Where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Reverend Bill's classes in practical spirituality at newthoughtphilly.org. And that's a wrap on episode 105 of the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm still wrapping my mind around 105. 105. <laughs> Sometimes it seems like we, we take on something that's, quote, big in an episode. And it seems um, bigger or different. But I'm not sure that's the case. That might be just something that, that happens because it's a week between episodes. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's all big. And depending on where you are um, in in your theology, that determines how big it is and, you know, new it is. To me, something always comes out new, new from it. Hmm. You know, so I, I was listening to, as a matter of fact, somebody pointed out to me um, the intro, and it said that Carol is on a spiritual quest in new thought and something um you know what it says yeah and carol Lawrence said, is on a spiritual quest yeah and then i come in and say i have some questions and the person you know is is very um pro carol like, <laughs> why why do they keep saying that you're you know you're on this spiritual quest like you are da -da 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 -da, and you know and i said you know what i will forever be on this spiritual quest you you never find and i ha will always have questions and some days I have more questions than others. It mm -hmm. depends on what's going on that day. But I will always be because I keep finding out new things. And you can tell I probably just pop something came to my mind <laughs> very recently. And it's, it's what makes it so worth it. Because yeah. when you think you know it all and you got you got a lock on it, well, then how do you explain that crap that's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and what I would say to your, to your Carol fan friend and listening to our intro is, it's showbiz. These are the roles that we're in. And the fact of the matter is, you could very easily and probably are teaching high-level New Thought classes to a bunch of different people in the context that you're doing and don't need me. Uh, and you keep on learning stuff because that's the nature of who you are. And I keep learning stuff too, but I'm here to spout. So, and you're here to, to ask questions and to, to, to tip over the spout. So that's, that, those are the, the roles that we have in this particular bit of showbiz. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> are you teaching classes? Of course you are. Of course. But you, do you call them new thought classes? Not really. Okay. Just talk about thinking. You know, my blog that I've written for a hundred years is called Just Thinking. And then another one is, another thing is called Creating Amazing. So that's creating an amazing life and how you do it. And so it just, I like the idea of flow and flowing in a, in a positive, believing the best direction. But you can only do that if you believe that there is better, better, best, and that it's there for you, you know, because there's a lot of buts out there, a lot of buts and yeah, but, and what about this? <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, but. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, but means no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what is amazing, though, when, when I'm doing classes and I just, I'm always studying, studying, and going back to find new, further back ancient wisdom and all that. And their new thought has been around for like forever. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if, if it wasn't called, it couldn't have been called New Thought because that's not the kind of language back there in those days. But then they'll say, well, this person is a New Thought author. And I'm thinking, you know what? They're just like spiritual. They just understood how it works. And then by the time you discovered this person, you know, 500 years ago that knew how it works. Now you call that person New Thought, which is wonderful because I think New Thought is such a beautiful t term. You know, I, I, I love that. But let's be honest, you know, if you if I say this is it, you're going to think that New Thought is just one thing and you can accept it or reject it. Right. I don't see it that way. I don't see it that way either. But then again, one of the most powerful metaphysicians in history was Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus' followers don't tend to think of him as new thought because they think of him in context with other religions that they're already involved in. Mm -hmm. So they don't really think that they, they need a, a different discipline, even though when they're doing what he said, it's new thought. And, you know, when you get up to where we are now, you know, people say, well, Jesus was new thought or Jesus was a metaphysician. They didn't use that term then. But I think that's... No, he the was meaning. a healer is what they yeah, used then. Right. So to me, that's the beauty of truth. Lang you can use the words, but what's beneath the words? It's the mm -hmm. reality. It's the truth of it. And when you, when you think of it that way, like the things that separate us come down, those walls and criticisms that come down because we're approaching the same thing from a different direction. So don't put a, like a whole lot of you know, labels on things. Um, we're comfortable with labels and they do help us. I, I understand that. But it's they're not wonderful the except, except when they, they bring about a sense of separation. Exactly. But they're not to the exclusion of some other um, interpretation of the truth, or let me say language, because it's, religions have different languages or lexicon. Right. And because I use this term does not exclude the truth that someone else is speaking using different words. And so um, a lot of times when I'm talking to people, they lay down their arms. <laughs> when you look at it like that. And so I'm not trying to tell you you're wrong. We're looking at the truth behind the words. And, mm -hmm. right. The power of and. Yes. Oh, it'd be another great episode. <sighs> and Let so us... you know, I am not happy with not saying to Shay Michelle Davis, Shay Bird. You know, they pop up because they're on the comments. So, hi. I just feel rude when somebody's there and I don't say hello to you. So, hello. Hello. And, and Ali Benjamin, who was, gave us a, a heart, I think, on, uh, on Facebook. Yeah, you and see that you. side. I don't see that side. I wish I could say hi to everybody, but if I see you, I just want to acknowledge you. Well, thank you, everybody, who is watching live or on the live stream. And again, a reminder that if you have a question or a prayer request or a comment, um, you can put it into um, uh, the, the website at bethelight.com, be-the-light.com. And we will address it. We may or may not do what you ask, but at least we'll, <laughs> we'll address it. Um, and, uh, and if you have a criticism uh, or something judgmental, you can keep it to yourself. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> I've had enough of that, you know. <laughs> I will see you next time. <laughs>
Thank you Center for Spiritual Living Seattle for your most generous donation. And a special thanks to Hefferlin Foundation for your generous technology grant. And Suze Ajit, thank you for your very generous donation. And a super special thank you to Dr. Tracy Brown, RSCP. Thanks for being a super donor. And a big shout out to all our committed donors.